Okay. Ooh. Come on. <laughs> Was your loved one's killer brought to justice? How does the result make you feel? Um. Ooh. Well, that was a mood changer, wasn't it? <laughs> um, no. Um, and it makes me feel today, like in this present moment, it makes me feel angry. But in the beginning, it made me feel unsafe. And it caused a lot of paranoia for me. And um, it just changed my life instantly. All the stuff that I always felt like, you so extra, like, you know, you ain't living that life, you ain't gotta be like that no more. Like, just chill out, you know what I'm saying? Um, it made me understand it, which was a whole crazy ass experience because my whole marriage, I never understood it, mm -hmm. you know, because it just wasn't the life that I lived. So I didn't, some, some things I just did not, and I would probably never have understood it. And then everything changed and I'm like, fuck, I get it. Like my husband thing was slippers camp. Mm -hmm. Slippers camp. I'm like, damn, babe, I love my kids. Slippers camp. Like, it was his That's fucking motto. <laughs> motto too. That's his motto. And I mean, this is like, uh, if he's in the car, his gun is right here on the lap. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, you know what I'm saying? It just slippers camp. Like, I remember him telling me when he was young, like 17, 18 years old, I went to the gun range every day for two years straight. The only day I didn't go was Sunday because I said, I'm going to take a break. But like, literally, like, he believed whatever you want to do, you can do it. You just got to do it enough times to learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, if I need to be a perfect shot, I'm going to some fucking gun range every day. I'm going to be a perfect shot. Slippers count. And I just was like, so it fucked with me that to be caught slipping like that, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Fucked with me, but... It just made me think, well, damn, that's somebody you trusted, as somebody you was exactly. comfortable with, because it's man's motto, like, he don't slip. So, who the fuck did this? Who knew? Who 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 put this into motion? And then I just felt like I couldn't trust nobody. Now I'm looking at everybody crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm paying, I'm hyper aware of everything, you know what I mean? Like, and it really fucked with my mental. And like, really to this day still do this. I'm just like getting better day by day with it. But yeah, no. Um, I have not received justice and I don't know. Um, I don't know that I ever will. I had, um, I had, went through a medium to speak to my husband before how was that girl that was an experience I'm grateful that I did it um but it was like it was who'd you go through somebody here no my nail tech recommended so I usually get readings done with my sister when I do them mm -hmm. I don't do them very frequently but when I feel like I need clarification on some or really compliment because that's all it be is confirmation for real um I'll go to my sister but girl me and my sister got into it and so I'm like you know what I want you speaking over my life right now because you know we at odds so let me just find somebody else and I don't trust anybody else enough to do that so when my nail tech recommended um her spiritual advisor I'm like okay you know let me take Nisha's recommendation I love a recommendation and she was dead on and it was like even stuff that I couldn't at the moment realize that was dead on after I thought about it it was like damn it was dead on she said it's something about an uncle 
was he close with your uncle? And I'm like, no. And the way she was asking me the questions was throwing me off on what I was thinking about. And it took me a few minutes to get to get down to the fact that my husband's uncle passed within a week, like within two weeks of him passing. And that's significant. So, you know what I mean? Like just things that he was communicating to let me know that it was him. But all of that to say, he told me that I will get justice regarding his murder, but it will not be now. And he told me what year it would be. Wow. So that been fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, so how long before the year come? It's less than 10. It's less than 10. I like, feel like I should just keep it to myself mm-hmm. what I was told, but yeah. it's less than 10. That's still a long time for a, a murderer to be walking the streets or running around or for you to be thinking of somebody and feeling unsafe. Yeah. You still have that feeling of unsurety. I don't feel unsafe anymore because I've been in situations that God has shown me like, Either I'm protecting you or he protecting you. Mm-hmm. But somebody's out here fucking watching over you. Watching the sure fuck over straight. me and my children and making sure we straight. Like it's been proven to me. So now I walk around like, you know, mm-hmm. like I'm him. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. I I feel untouchable the fuck. But um, yeah, like I I've, I've gotten over the feeling of unsafeness, but it's still just like anxiety mm-hmm. about people watching my kids mm-hmm. or who do you know that I don't know that you know? Mm-hmm. Who's your peoples that I don't know is your peoples? Or I don't know that you fuck with this person and I don't fuck with them. Or that. Because the people you fuck with, I may not fuck with. Yeah. I had an experience. My very best friend, to make a long story short, had was friends, was close with somebody who believed that my husband killed their peoples made me lose my best friend who'd been my best friend my whole life. That type shit. And it just makes you, like, if you could do me like that, if you could cross me for this person who feels some type of way about my husband, Mm -hmm. who the fuck else really feels some type of way? Exactly. And I'm younger than him, so the shit he done did in the streets, I don't even know a lot of this shit. Yeah, it was before. I don't know that you, you know what I mean? I don't know about this shit. So, what about you? Have you had justice? As for me, uh, we have had justice, street mm-hmm. justice, per se. It's a blessing. Um, you would think it's a blessing, in which mm-hmm. I do see it as a blessing. But then at the same time, I still feel like that was the easy way. Out. Mm-hmm. Why couldn't you be in jail? I'm thinking of the most evil as shit because this was the person that I loved. This is the person that was supposed to have me raise my kids and we were supposed to carry on through life. But you took, you got the easy way out. But you also don't get to spend time with your kids or even have more kids or marry or mm-hmm. have a 30th birthday or even a 25th birthday. Like, y'all, y'all really did it up. Y'all shot him over 20 times. So, and to identify somebody like that was horrific. I was a kid identifying a body. What was the first, if you can remember, what was the first thought that came in your head when you seen him? I felt like he was angry. His fists were balled up tight. Mm-hmm. Like the corner still had, didn't unball his fist. Um, the top of his head was shot, uh, was like a hole through his head. Uh, his ear was shot off. His uh, face was bloody. And like, you could see like, have you ever seen like a uh, hamburger meat, like where it's kind of like, oh, like where if you stick your hand in the middle and you take some out and then you got some just still sticking up, mm-hmm. his body was like a bunch of holes look like that. So mm-hmm. it was like, am I really seeing that side of my fucking dream? And it's like real, I ain't never seen no shit like this in my life. So that's the kind of, I didn't react at first cause I was like, and the lady was like, if you touch him, you become evidence. So you can't touch him. You can only look at him. So I was like, at least let me give him a hug. Our kids, and she was like, you can't. So I was just like, ain't no fucking way we got to go through this shit. And how old was you? I was uh, 19, I believe 20. Mm-hmm. 19 years old with three kids. Knowing that I'm going to have to go home and explain this to my kids. By the time I got there, my daughter was like, 
I already know what's going on. You can tell the other two. Like my daughter has been advanced and so mature for so long. She's like, I already know. Everybody's been over here crying because people had already rushed to my house because I'm rushing, I'm leaving work, rushing to the hospital. The hospital's crowded. And then I go home and the whole fucking Victory Park was like full of just people everywhere. And she was like, people have been crying. So they said my daddy died. So I was just like, well, damn. Was you upset that somebody told your kid that before? I wasn't, I ain't gonna lie. I wasn't thinking clearly. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if it was okay to tell them if I wasn't. It was my first time ever going through something like this. So I was like, I don't know if I should be angry, if I should be happy, if I should be glad I ain't got to tell them. So I told her like, what she wanted to know, the little questions that she asked. People was like, it was too much to tell a child, but she asked. And you don't want to lie to me? Like, I ain't lying to my kids. I ain't lying ain't no to lies. my kids, because this is the realest shit we're about to have to go through already. So what's the point of even trying to, you know, turn it down or fake it or, try to water it down, it's just not the time for that. I need to be real. Do you tell your kids about the lifestyle your husband lived? Yeah. I mean, the, you mm-hmm. know, all the time. Live. All the time, but they think that um, a lot of the time, because they listen to all that rap music and stuff, <laughs> they be thinking I'd be over-exaggerating who he was. They be like, you don't <laughs> like that. And I'm like, I ain't gonna lie to you. He was a nutcase. And they're like, nobody was crazier than you, mama. But I'm like, no, he was crazier than me. You ain't believe that? They don't believe it. They don't see it. And they love like King Von, Lil Durk, Lil Baby, uh, 21 Set, all of it. They just be like, nah, my daddy wasn't that type of person. I couldn't see him being that type. I'm like, I know you didn't know. He kept y'all away from it, but he pushed me right on into it. (laughs) So I know. (laughs) I ain't telling you no lie. Your daddy was nuts. (laughs) And see, I be thinking like, how much am I going to tell my son? But I feel like because kids just get it honest right whether you around your parent or not i feel like you should keep it real with them uh if they ask keep it real with them because there's going to be somebody to go out there and tell the story for you and you don't want that Mm -hmm. you want to you want to like my kids are game tight if you ever get around them and talk to them and stuff you be like it's what girl how How old are you (laughs) and people ask it all the time people like how does she know that i'm like i told her so you Mm -hmm. ain't gonna finesse my daughter out of nothing you're not gonna finesse out of pussy out of money out of nothing everything's gonna come real for me so anything else that you tell her ain't gonna matter. Cause she gonna be like, my mom already told me, so you can't run no game on me. I just wonder like, do I choose to tell that? I think it'll just come a time. It'll come like, a time. I didn't tell yeah. them right away, you know, over the years. Mm-hmm. But now that they're in middle school and they seeing like different stuff and like, it's a little girl that was at their in their uh, school that was pregnant. So she's be way younger than I was having a kid. And I thought, I thought it, 16 when I was pregnant with my first child before I lost my first child with their father because I would have had four kids. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, oh, look at them calling. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, um, 16 is too young. But to know that a 12-year-old is at their school pregnant, it's like, I'm, I better give them the game. Somebody's up there doing something. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on in school. I was being fed to these kids at home, but I don't want them to come to school and make my kids feel like this shit's okay. Go get your money. I always go get your money. Don't depend on nobody. Get out here and get an education. Grow. Buy you a house. Travel. And then see if that's what you want to settle down and do and be somebody's baby mama, wife, or whatever the case is. But don't let nobody finesse you out of your, your future. Yeah. Your future. Because Lord knows I wouldn't have been thinking to have no three or four kids by no one person that I ain't married to and not finishing my college degree. Like, I'm supposed to be a lawyer right now. <laughs> We all have a perception, an mm-hmm. idea, a plan mm-hmm. of what we're going to be in life. And sometimes it don't work out like it. It never works out like that. Yeah. 